Okay. Okay, she stole some of my thunder because thunder, I was going to ask everybody, has anybody dealt with back pain? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but I also have another question. How many of you have ever suffered from severe back pain, something that laid you up for like a day or two? You could not get out of bed. Yeah, that's no fun, huh? Um, and then you, there's, there's somebody that was dealing with some back pain right now. Okay. So, I mean, how many are wanting to get rid of that or at least get a good idea of what you can do to help yourself with that? Okay, good. Uh, before I start out, I wanted to share something. I, the other day I was reading an article, and the article had talked about intelligence and physical attraction. And in that article, the author had mentioned that one out of every three person, a third person is very, phys very physically attractive and very intelligent. So since we have a crowd here, I wanted to kind of test that theory and see what it's like. So what I'm going to ask you to do is I'm going to ask you, look to the person to your right and look that person over real good. Now look to the person to your left and look that person over real good. Since it isn't either one of them, it must be you. Okay, all kidding aside, one of the things I want you to get from today is I really do want you to understand how truly special each and every one of you are. I, I want to shed some light on that because I think we've kind of lost that as a whole. Every day we're being bombarded with fear of disease and sickness. Uh, it's all over the news. It's all over the media. It's on the internet. Um, not to mention all the drug commercials that come on telling us what disease we have and what medications we need to ask the doctor for. It's gotten so bad that we can't even handle the common flu on our own. So I'm hoping to instill some empowerment with you today and get an understanding of how much stronger you really are. Um, <clears throat> allow me just to tell you a little bit more about myself. We had a great introduction, thank you very much. Mm, I have been in the Silicon Valley for over 25 years, and I've really seen how this dot-com industry has changed our spines. It's really putting a lot of damage on our spines. Um, and through that time, I've seen the emergence of, of repetitive stress injuries, you know, carpal tunnel, uh, neck pain, back pain, we've all seen that. Uh, the increased demands of, of long hours, prolonged sitting, um, the massive stress and, and physical and mental stress that this type of industry can cause takes a toll on our body. Um, and then there's also the, the rising cost of medical expenses because of all this. Increased loss of production. Um, and then we also have uh, um, increased loss of production. Okay. And... Um, <clears throat> Then, all that sparked the emergence of ergonomics. We all know that key word about ergonomics, which caused a huge rise in cost of chairs and desks, and now they're over $1,000. But in spite of all that awareness, oh, and then the dubious distinction that the Silicon Valley has, the forward head posture is now being dubbed the Silicon Valley disease. Congratulations, Silicon Valley. <laughs> so um, all that's putting damage on our spine. But in spite of all that awareness and all these upgrades with ergonomics, I still see these challenges in my office today. I still see people coming in with degenerative disc, not knowing why. So we're going to kind of talk about that today and get an idea of, of what that is. But before we can get there, so, so as, as the introduction had mentioned, I'm not just about back pain. Back pain, there's so much more to it. I'm about quality of life and, and getting the whole body better. And so for us to kind of figure out what we're going to do, we kind of need to get on the same page. And um, if our goal is to strive to be health, we need to define health, right? What is health? Why don't you guys just give me some words of what you might um, think health is? Flexibility. Flexibility, beautiful. Anybody else? Say it again. Physical well-being. Anybody else? Happiness. Happiness. Yes. Yes, those are all great aspects of health. One of the most complete definitions that I've discovered up to this point is in Dorland's Medical Dictionary. Dorland's Medical Dictionary defines health as a state of optimum physical, mental, and social well-being, and not merely the absence of disease or infirmary. So what does that really mean? There's many components to health, obviously. Wow, that's going in slow, huh? I should have done that a few minutes ago. So there's many components to, to health. <clears throat> we might be done by the time we get done with this, huh? <laughs> so physical. How's your physical health? Mental. The last speaker. Beautiful. Mental health. How's that? And then our social well-being. These are all important components to our health. 
That's mental. That's part of mental health. Yeah. Um, but the last component of that definition was not merely the absence of disease or infirmaries. Now, most talks I do this, the, the number one um, answer for health is feeling good. But this definition basically states that just feeling good doesn't mean you're healthy. We've all heard of that person that runs every day and exercises well, and then they died of a heart attack. Um, so, so just feeling good is not a, not a good answer for um, wellness or, or being healthy. So maybe I can move on, I hope. I guess I could have done that. Beautiful. So one of the things I do in my office is I want to get an idea of where people believe they are in their health. And if you're taking notes, put this line on, the, on, the gra- on your piece of paper. It's a graph that I give my patients, and I ask them three questions on this graph. So this is a health and wellness scale, 0%. Obviously, that person's not with us. 100%, they're doing fantastic. So I asked them three questions. The number one question is obvious. Where do you believe you are on this graph? Okay? <clears throat> so get an idea of where you think you might be on this graph. The number two question, and most impo- more important question, which direction are you heading? The reason I ask this question is because there's no such thing as status quo. We are either getting better or getting worse. And if you're not actively doing something to better yourself, which most of you, I believe, are because you're here. You're here looking for some good information. Um, you are getting worse if you're not actively doing something for it. And then the final question is, how do you know? How do you know where you put yourself is, is the right place that you really are? So we're going to talk about that a little bit later. Um, <clears throat> Now, I'm going to go back one slide. So every day, as we go through the day, our body's in this battle of health and sickness, recovering, healing, uh, doing everything it can to, to help itself recover. And that process is what we call homeostasis. Its full purpose is to keep you healthy, keep you in balance. Okay? Um, <clears throat> but... Let's say we're going through the day, and uh, sometimes you could, you could, your body could be fighting something, you're not, you, you don't even know it's there. But some days we just don't feel so good. We know our body's kind of fighting something a little bit. Or some days we're just not feeling good at all. We have a fever, we have an upset stomach, you know, maybe we have some vomiting or diarrhea. We would consider this person what? Sick, right. Um, but I would question that whether or not. In fact, I would question whether sickness even exists. How many people here believe sickness exists? We gotta wake these people up. Okay, so, <laughs> all right, I'm gonna kind of switch gears a little bit and then um, talk about something else, and we'll come back and relate it to sickness. How about darkness? How many people believe darkness exists? Okay, a few more people think darkness exists. Beautiful. Let's say we were to close all these doors, turn off all the lights, and the room's totally dark. How much darkness could we remove from the room to brighten the room? None, right? We can't remove darkness. So how do we brighten the room? Bring the lights in, right? So in that scenario, darkness only exists in the absence of light. I believe sickness is the same thing. Sickness only exists in the absence of health. So rather than focusing on fighting sickness and disease, let's focus on getting healthier. And that, you got a lot of that today, a lot of great stuff today for that. So I'm hoping you guys took notes and thought about it. And, and tonight, review those notes, you know, and pick out the things you think that might work for you, and then put them to work. Don't wait. Start on those right now. Um, so let's get back to the sickness and disease things. Every day your body's fighting, trying to do something to keep you in balance, keep you healthy. Um, and like I said, sometimes you may not feel so good, so your body's fighting it. But you, know, you take some medications to get through the day because you've got a deadline to meet. Or maybe you've got a little back pain or neck pain and, and you've got a schedule to keep, but so you're going to take some medications and fight through it. And in this battle, your body's working hard to keep things going for you, right? And it takes a tremendous amount of energy for for your immune system to work, and it takes a lot of resources, some nutrients to do that. And so the days you keep going and keep going, you're medicating yourselves to get through it, and now your body's kind of running down a little bit, and it needs some nutrients. Maybe it needs an apple, or it needs a banana, or some kind of nutrient to help support it, but you give it a diet of Coke. So by this time, you're, you're fighting through the pain, you're fighting through the illness, you're not fueling the body with the nutrients it needs, 
Your body has the right to ask you, whose side are you on here? I'm fighting every day to keep you going, and you're not giving the resources I need. Now, earlier I had mentioned each and, each and every one of you is special. You're very, very special. Um, each one of you is born with this innate intelligence to help you heal. So every day, your heart beats 115,000 beats a day, pumping 2,000 gallons of blood a day. You take 23,000 breaths a day. You do nothing to help that. Your body does it all on its own, okay? So this intelligence, or let's talk about the, the, a baby. You have two cells that come together in about 10 months. You have this incredible, beautiful creature, right? You do nothing to make that baby grow. It just continually does this development on its own. It knows exactly what to do at the exact right time. That same intelligence still resides in your body today. All right, we just need to help it move along a little bit better. Um, so, <clears throat> let me go to this one. So how do we do health? How do we get healthy? You've got a, like I said earlier, you've got a tremendous amount of great information today. I mean, that, there's really good information here. Not a lot of MDs look at people like these two doctors do, right? I mean, they constantly want to do, I, I have patients constantly come to me because they don't want to take medications anymore. They want to do something about it. And now you're getting some really good information on nutrients and things like that. So I was pretty excited today. But there are basically five fundamental keys to health. And number one is food. Food, or more appropriately, nutrients. Because our body really is just absorbing nutrients. Food or nutrients is fuel, right? I have a lot of patients that have very nice cars, and they take really good, 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 good care of those cars. The minute the check engine light goes on, they go to the, get it fixed. They're constantly doing their maintenance right where they want to. They put the appropriate fuel in that vehicle. How's our fuel? It fuels energy for our body, how good is our body going to run with the fuel we're putting in? So let's take a little more better choices with the food. Like I said earlier, you've got plenty of great information today for that. Exercise. We all know exercise is important. Dr. Sinai talked about some different ideas. I really liked his, um, his ideas about going to the internet and looking at these different programs. Uh, I'm basically going to ask you to do the same thing. I think in my office what I run into a lot is the patients have challenges trying to put this time aside to do the exercise. How many people have that problem? I mean, just trying to find the time, right? The idea is you got to change clothes, get to the gym, do your exercise for an hour, and then get changed back and get back. Who has that time to do that? But I'm going to ask two things of you today. Number one, I'm going to ask you just to commit to 15 minutes. Just put aside 15 intentional minutes a day to exercise. Now, if you're already walking your dog or do a lot of walking at work, that doesn't count. I get that all the time from my patients. Well, I've been, I walk a lot at work and I've been doing it for years. Well, it's not help you progress anywhere, right? So you need to do an additional 15 minutes intentionally. And you need to do at least five days a week. Now, there's all these things on the internet that you can just type in 15-minute exercises and find the ones that you think you can work for you. But I want you to try to commit to that. And the second thing I want you to commit to is do it for 30 days. Just 30 days, commit to 30 days, don't commit past that, but do five days a week for 15 minutes for 30 days. And those of you that do commit to that, I, I want you to grab my email and email me and let me know, because I know you're going to tell me how much better you feel. How many in here are ready to commit to that right now? You're going to do 15 minutes a day. Beautiful. Thank you. 15, if you don't have 15 minutes to take care of yourself, you really don't have a life. Okay? <laughs> Number three, rest or sleep. This is primarily where our body does most of its healing, right? This is where we recover, recharge our batteries, and do most of its healing. From a chiropractic standpoint, this is the time the discs rehydrate, right? Statistics say, or, or um, research says it takes seven to eight hours for your disc to completely rehydrate. This is where they get their nutrients, they swell up. That's why sometimes we feel taller in the morning, or some of you that might be having some challenges, you feel really stiff in the morning getting out of bed. You've got to do a lot of work to loosen up, and, and you should get checked for that. Um, so sleep's very important. Positive mental attitude. There's so much research done out there today about how the benefits of positive mental attitude helps us, our physiology get better. In fact, there's miracle cures of people who were told they had nothing left to live for. They were not going to make it, and they simply went and surrounded themselves with positivity, laughter, and they've cured themselves from disease. 
um, Tony Robbins talks a lot about uh, there's two emotions that really just mess us up, fear and anger. They just really tear away at our physiology. So one of the things he suggests is spend a few moments every morning on gratitude, being grateful for something. Because if you're in gratitude, you can't have fear and you can't be angry. So try to spend a few minutes every morning just being grateful for the simple things. The fact that you woke up this morning, the fact that you get to feel the sun today, you know, your beautiful family, your beautiful kids or wife or whatever it is, just simple gratitude. Spend a little bit every day and set your intention for the day in gratitude as opposed to stress, I gotta get up, get to work. Um, so you wanna try to stay away from that stress even though this area is very, very good for that. And then finally, a sound nervous system. This is what I primarily deal with. Um, your nervous system is run by your innate intelligence, and it controls and coordinates every single thing in your body. Nothing gets done without your nervous system telling it to do so. So let me ask you this. If your nervous system is in charge of everything in your body, how effective do you want your nervous system to be? 80%? How about 90%? Yeah, we all want it to be 100%, of course. Um, so one of the conditions I primarily deal with in my office is called the subluxation. Basically what a subluxation is, it's a misaligned vertebrae that's become fixated, all right? And there's different degrees of fixations. So initially you may not even know you have one. And then maybe it becomes a little more irritated and then you start to notice, I got a little back pain or I got a little neck pain. At this point you're like, I don't know if it's muscle or back. If it continues to move on, then it gets a little more irritated. Now you start getting more swelling, the inflammation that Dr. Ron talked about. Um, and then it may be choking a nerve. And now you've got that numbness and tingling down the arm or down the leg. It's a bit more serious. I deem this in my book pre-degenerative disc disease because I know if this is left unattended to, untreated, it will progress to degenerative disc disease. Um, so... Once degenerative disc disease gets into the segment, it's a relentless process. It just continues to go if left alone. And it will get to a point where it gets so serious, the bones will actually fuse together and allow that place to not move at all, all right? And then we've all heard recently that at this point, this is where you, you, your only option is surgery. And we've all heard Coach Steve Kerr, any Warriors fans in here, he said avoid back surgery at all costs. I mean, look what he's dealing with right now. So, um, so, so with, the, with the subluxations, what, what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to get to, these, get, to, get to people before it gets to this point where it is so severe. Um, you start, we start masking these symptoms with medications, and, and then it gets worse, and then uh, it gets to the point where it is so severe that... One day, you do a seemingly insignificant move. You bend down to tie your shoe, and now you're in so much pain, you can't even get up, right? You go to the doctor, and he's trying to give you meds. They don't seem to work. Um, you're doing PT. That doesn't seem to be helping very much. And now they send you to the spinal surgeon, and he says, you know, you need surgery. So I want to get to everybody before that happens, because I know we can prevent that from happening. Um, how many here have been diagnosed with spinal degeneration? I mean, you've had x-rays or MRIs telling you you have a spinal degeneration. Nobody. Okay. All right. Well, let's, let's take a quick look. It's hard to see there, but this is a textbook spinal degeneration. Um, this is a person who's looking towards the, towards the back of the room. There's their spinal neck. There's no curve in their neck. This is something we deal with. I'm, I'm a biomechanically-based chiropractor. I want to induce these curves, make them better. Because without that curve, there's so much stress being placed on that spine, and that's why they have that degeneration right there. Um, so what degeneration is, let me try to make this a little more clear. These discs right here are nice and thick. They're healthy, and this one's nice and narrow. And then you've got the, all this down here. This is jagged edges, and now it's starting to develop some bone spurs out here. That's evidence of chronic, chronic stress. Some medical doctors will look at this and say, look, that's just due to normal aging. There's nothing we can do. I don't believe it's normal aging, all right? Because if it is due to normal aging, I want to know how old the rest of those vertebrae are because there's no degeneration there, and I think they're the same age. So it's due to biomechanics. It's due to a subluxation that was never attended to. This person now comes in with weakness in the arm. Now, that means the nerve's been choked pretty darn good, um, more than numbness and tingling. 
So, I mean, this is a lot of work to try to recoup from. Um, you know, with the close proximity of the vertebrae and the disc, then the nerves coming out right behind there, it doesn't take much to choke a nerve. Research has stated that it only takes the equivalent to the weight of a dime to reduce the spinal nerve by 50%. Now, earlier, we didn't even want 90%. We wanted 100%. Imagine 50% of the nerve is choked off, all right? Now imagine that nerve goes to your liver or your kidneys or your intestines or even your heart. It's not good, all right? So we need to try to get to these things before they get to the point where they're damaged like this. Now, medical doctors look at films a little differently than chiropractors. They're, they're more concerned about damage, you know, uh, trauma, fractures, gross pathologies, you know, diseases type things like that. We look at them a little more biomechanically based. So... This is why we get to it a little bit sooner. Um, let's do this. So in closing, um, now let me go here. So in order to help people try to, try to get to this problem before it gets really bad, we want to try to catch it as soon as we can. So I've created this Get Started program. It's basically designed to get a real good picture of what your spine looks like. Okay, thank you. So, what does my Get Started program entail? We do a very comprehensive examination. I mean, we spend a lot of time going over neurology. Um, we go over, uh, chiro we do a chiropractic exam, and we do an orthopedic exam. Then we also do a digital posture evaluation. This kind of gives us an idea of how much stress is being placed on your spine. And then we also take x-rays, because x-rays tell the whole story, just like that x-ray we saw there. A lot of times, you won't get x-rays done when you go to the medical doctor. So we take x-rays now. We know exactly what your biomechanics look like, how healthy your curves, how healthy your disc. Is there any deviation? Unfortunately, I took a picture of a gentleman the other day, and he had real severe scoliosis in the neck. He never knew it. He's over 48 years old. So it's a good idea to get an idea of where you're at. What I do is once we do all this information, I, I sit down and I evaluate everything and try to put together what I call a report of findings. And I review that report of findings with you to give you an idea of what I suggest you might do. Now, if I can help you, I'm going to give you some recommendations of care, but it's based on your healthcare goals, not mine. If I cannot help you, I am going to send you to somebody who will. So if you are struggling with trying to figure out what's going on, this is a great place to start. In the beginning, I told you how many would like to end this back pain or at least get some direction. If you come here, we will at least know where to go next, okay? Now, I mean, medical expenses are, spent, are, are high these days. I normally charge $490 for this exam. For this venue here today, I'm only charging $99. All right, it's a cash price. If you have insurance, we'll talk about that later. If you're interested in really getting an idea of what's going on with your spine, this is a great opportunity. One of the, I, I asked you about that wellness graph there earlier, and I had three questions. And the last one was, how do you know? This will let us know exactly where your spinal health is. Okay. I want to thank you guys. I mean, this was amazing. I thank you all for being here. I appreciate you guys looking for a way to better yourselves. It's really great. Thank you very much. Questions for uh, Dr. McCauley? Any questions? Anybody? I can't see very clearly the lights in my... I know, it is right now. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I do have a question that yes. uh, popped up. We... Uh, there's a question, okay. We'll, we'll go to that. Uh, yeah. Um, I, do, I don't have any issues with my back or spine or okay. neck. Do I need to get that exam done to check maybe I, um, there is something wrong or uh, I don't have to worry about it? No, I, I, it's like I mentioned earlier, you could have a subluxation and not know it till the day you bend down and tie your shoe. Um, I, I, in my office, it's a wellness practice, so we get everybody evaluated. I take care of newborn babies. I mean, I don't take x-rays of them, but I take care of babies right after they've been born because it's such a traumatic event of getting that baby out twisted and everything else. So getting an evaluation is a great idea. Mm -mm. Now or yeah. How do we get to be paid now? Yeah, you sign up today, pay now, and then uh, we'll schedule you here today, and then uh, we'll take a look at you and, and see how things go. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? So uh, I did want to address your, when you asked us, how many of you have had your spinal 
know that you have had spinal so, a lot of us have never been to a chiropractor I've, and a lot of us don't even know what a subluxation is okay uh, unless you know you're in a uh, car accident and then uh, they say okay you know you, you get that whiplash and that's how a lot of us realize right. dr macaulay so uh, my question to you specifically was if um, somebody is suffering from this was something that came up on our uh, radio show we asked what questions would you like to ask the doctors uh, one of the questions was uh, if you have been having back pain uh, periodically because you're sitting in traffic you have right. an hour-long commute every day right. each way uh, and it goes off on its own right. and then it comes back right. and it sometimes it's uh, almost debilitating right. so is that something to be ignored what should you be doing in that case or is it just poor core strength is no. what was the question well that that's a that's a key component to it yes but that should not be ignored one of the things dr ron talked about this earlier when you have pain there's an inflammatory response 99 percent of pain is inflammatory so what that body does, when it, I'm, I'm sure a lot of us experience the ankle, sprained ankle, it swells up. What that body is doing is it's throwing fibrous tissue in that area to protect it. If you're having chronic pain like this, you're getting that fibrous tissues infiltrated into that area. So that area is now getting further and further and further less mobile. So when you have a segment that's not moving very well, the rest of the spine has to do more work just to get it to move. And now you start getting muscle tension and all these other little things. It starts affecting the nerves down the leg. So she should definitely, chronic pain is not something to ignore. One of the things I believe we do is we take that little, oh, I have some numbness down the arm or I have sciatic pain too lightly. We take it way too lightly. So definitely should, 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 that person should get evaluated. Yeah. There's another question. Yeah. What exercises can we do um, to keep our back or spine, you know, under... Yeah, flexibility is probably the primary key first, right? If, if you've got these adhesions built up and you're not moving as well as you should, you want to start really working on flexibility first. So in my office, when we go through a program, the main key is trying to get motion first, which is through adjustments and flexibility. I don't incorporate core strengthening for at least a month because I want to get to make sure you get full range of motion. It's one of the challenges with PT. Sometimes it helps alleviate the pain, but sometimes it doesn't because it's focusing on the muscle and those are muscles attached to those joints. And if they're not moving, you're making the muscle do more work. So work on flexibility first. And then there's tons of core exercises. In my office, we like to use the ball, the big exercise ball, mm -hmm. because that forces you to use balance as well. And it creates those little tiny strength in those tiny muscles. So if you just start exercising too, the other challenge is because that area is not moving very well, if you've got small muscles in between the segments that haven't been used very much. So this is, this is typically what happens. You haven't used those little muscles very much, so they're weak. Everybody knows if you put your arm in a cast, it atrophies, right? So it gets very weak. So if you have these little muscles that aren't moving very well, and then you go to a move that's a little beyond what you typically do, you make that little muscle fire up, oh, man, that's what happens. So work on flexibility first, break things up. When you feel like you've got really good range of motion, then you start working on core strengthening. And I've got a bunch Thank of those you. in my book in there. I've got all the different stretches and exercises you could do for your spine. Any other questions? Yes, there's a question out there. Yes. Uh huh. Uh huh. But when I'm uh, uh, over there for first time being, it's good. But later on, it comes back. So what? How is your program different than the other chiropractor and physiotherapist? I well, I don't know. Well, PT, I know they work with just muscles. They're trying to get balance in muscles and range of motion. With the other chiropractor, I'm not sure what his technique is. But so, so, so two of my concerns are, one, do you have something going on in your neck that's choking some of the nerves so you're not firing all those muscles properly? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I would first start with your cervical curve. I'd say, what's going on here first? Let's make sure the shoulder's getting all the information it's supposed to get. And now let's start creating balances with the shoulders. I don't know what exercises you've gotten. You know, I don't know if they're doing anything as far as you know, walking the wall and stretching the shoulder at all. But if it comes back, it tells me you're not either not getting strong or your nerves aren't firing enough to tell that muscle. We talked about impingement, 50%. Let's say you're only getting 75% to the shoulder. It doesn't matter how much you exercise the muscle, it's not going to get stronger. So I'd want to look into your neck first. Any other questions? Dr. McCauley, just one quick thing before we wrap today. Uh, could you tell us what kind of posture should we be maintaining and how do we make, make sure that 
uh, we're cognizant of uh, our posture during the day. Well, I mean, first thing with, with work, we can't sit as long as we sit. We just can't do it. You need to take frequent breaks, right? Sitting creates so much stress in the low back. You, you have no idea how much stress the low back receives from sitting. And I think one of the challenges in this area is the damage is so subtle, right? We sit all day, we sit all day, get a little ache here, a little ache there. All of a sudden, seven years later, we got arthritis. So you need to take frequent breaks. You need to move and create flexibility. Um, as I said earlier, flexibility is a key at first because we're, we're all... So this is why I put everybody, every one of my patients on a daily stretch routine first because we've all created this mold. You mentioned that uh, caller that they sit in the car, they drive an hour, and then they go sit at their desk. So we've got this mold of motion that we've created ourselves. We need to break out of that mold. We need to create motion. And then you can start doing some core exercises to... Be, you know, work with your posture. But awareness is the key, right? You know, you got to, I mean, how many times have you ever just stand there and all of a sudden you're going, why am I holding my shoulders up? Just relax. So you got to be aware of your posture. Get up, take frequent breaks, and then look in the mirror and just be aware of your posture. Mm -mm. All right. Any other questions? Good. Great. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. McCauley. Thank you. I would Thank like you. to...